What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So we're over here like the Bee Batania area. Well, it's kind of Batania area for now. It won't be for long. Uh, but yeah, we're over here because I am collecting a lot of mana and I am making a lot of tear steel at the moment. I'm using blaze rods to uh, keep all these endo flames going. And as you can see, I've added in quite a few more of these mana spreaders. Yeah, I wanted to get to the point where we had enough mana spreaders for all the end of flames that I had crafted previously. Yep. Uh, I think I doubled what I had here before as far as mana spreaders go. So I have about four end of flames per spreader or something along those lines. I've gone through and like I've clicked these things and made sure the internal buffer for their mana isn't getting overflown. And every one of these appears to be sending enough mana where it's not you know, being overstocked internally, so we're not wasting mana, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I just keep throwing like half stacks on <laughs> the ones on the four cardinal directions uh, that spreads out the blaze rods for those endo flames. And yeah, we're producing a decent amount of mana. So right now, we got over half a mana pool's worth, so we can go ahead and throw our mana pearl, mana steel, mana diamond down there on the plate thingy, and it's gonna make my last thing of terra steel. Um, yeah, so we need Terra Steel. I was looking at these different mana pools to see if we could have one that held more. I think the creative one is about the best. I don't know if the fabulous mana pool holds more than the regular one. Anyway, that's not important. Uh, what we want to do... RF Tools. Alright, we need to go pick that thing up. Yeah, we want to make this Dimension Builder. And yeah, this required the Awakened Draconium, which required the draconic flux capacitor <laughs> and i think it's this one right here requires the terra steel these things the awakened core so i needed a decent amount of these things and i figured you know i might as well just make some up in bulk i've already previously made a little bit of this stuff extra but yeah i definitely wanted to have some more uh so i don't have to keep sitting over here and camping it every time we need a piece of the terra steel uh, eventually i would like to have all of that stuff automated how much do we have in the system? We have eight in the system now. Here's eight more. Okay, I think we're going to be good for a few minutes on that stuff anyway. Yeah, eventually I would like to have a proper Batania area set up where um, <laughs> it's automatically producing the mana. We have a large supply of mana and all of this stuff. I'd like to get involved in that mod a bit. I haven't really done much with Batania previously. But yeah, it's something I'm interested in. All right. Cool, so now that we have that Terra Steel, I wanna look at making this Dimension Builder like I was talking about. Uh, so it's gonna require me to use a lot of the Awakened Draconium. Um, I've killed the Ender Dragon, I think four more times since last episode or since we ended last episode. Yeah, I wanted to make sure we had plenty of this stuff for the tool or uh, for this Dimension Builder. And then if we are gonna to make tools or anything, I wanna have a little bit extra. I still don't think that's gonna be enough. I think we're gonna to have to defeat that dragon a few more times yeah. So anyway, um, I did set up the quarry and we have collected 384 diamond ore. Mm -hmm. I set the quarry up in a extreme hills biome. I was thinking, you know, we should probably collect emeralds if we're going to be doing the quarry again. Uh, by the way, all these diamonds we have here, this is from the UU matter. I forgot to change that back to iridium and this ran overnight. So we had something like 12 or 13 stacks of diamonds. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to collect some more emeralds. So I set the quarry up in an extreme hills biome. We're not getting any emeralds at all. We've had 15 emerald ore in the system for a while now. And I think we got this from the twilight forest from quarrying out at a hollow hill. Uh, these are the emeralds we got from training villagers. The quarry is still going. Um, if we search for ore, we can see like some of these numbers increasing every now and then, I suppose. Yeah, 9,000. Uh, iron ore, which I'd processed all these ores previously. So yeah, we've collected a decent amount of this stuff or Maybe the quarry's finished. I'm not seeing any. Oh, no, that I just saw the tin go up. There we go Yeah, so we are collecting ore still, but we aren't getting any emerald, which is really really weird to me uh, Let's sleep real quick. I'll take you guys over to the quarry just so you can see where this thing is set up uh, Like I said, I set it up in an extreme hills biome Let's see All right, so if we go to the map, 
there's our quarry. We can see that it's quarried out all that snow. I, yeah, I had to go like over here a little bit. And then I have since moved it and I brought it further over here and it should be doing like this area. I guess it's only done about this far. Hmm. Maybe we should head over here real quick and just kind of see. Yeah, it's eating away the snow. That's a good indicator of where it is. I'm not sure what's going to happen when it gets to the Stormcraft thing. I don't know if it's going to be able to quarry this block or this thing's going to be destroyed or what. I guess we'll find out eventually. Yeah, it looks like it's right there. Cool. But yeah, uh, this is Extreme Hills. You can see that on the, um, the little thingy right here. This is Extreme Hills. But yeah, we haven't collected any emerald ore, so I kind of feel like the emerald ore is not being generated in the terrain. I was looking for a config option to see uh, if that was the case, like just to verify it by looking at the text files or whatever, but I couldn't find anything that said anything about the ore generation. Oops, I didn't want to go to spawn. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of an issue. I think the only place we are going to be able to get emeralds is from the Twilight Forest. Now, the reason why we even want emeralds, I was looking at the, uh, Draconic Evolution stuff. Uh, these higher tier ones, the Draconic, like, uh, the Draconic Sword, for instance, requires a dense emerald ore, and we don't have any of these. And I was trying to preemptively get some of these things, but yeah... Doesn't look like we're getting any emeralds at all from that extreme hills biome. So if you guys know uh, if that has been turned off or where I can get emeralds in the overworld by using quarry, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just go to the twilight like I was talking about. So RF tools, uh, I'm going to make a few of these machines. I'm going to get this dimension builder thing built. Yeah, it does require like all these things. We have to make another wyvern flux capacitor. Or actually, I guess we're going to have to make like four of those. Yeah, we have to build a few of those. Uh, I might make a draconic flux capacitor for myself. I guess it just depends if we have extra awakened draconium. I don't know if we will or not. We'll see. But anyway, yeah, this is going to take a minute for me to do. So I'm going to craft and we'll be back. All right, guys. So I'm in the process of making some thomium right now. And I wanted to show you guys this trick that was just shown to me a little while ago about, you know, doing cauldron crafting. Now, normally when you do... Um, the Thaumium, you have to do two Ender Pearls and then a Mana Steel ingot. You get that. But the Ender Pearls have extra junk in there. Uh, what do they have? They have like the, the Eider and the Tenebrae or whatever those things are. I don't know. But anyway, you got extra junk in your cauldron that you don't want in there. So what I did before is we had this glass thing set up, right? And then we have a piston here to push this block and crush any of that flux goo that appears when we use the wand. Um, but yeah, as it turns out, you don't need to do that. <laughs> I left the thickened glass here and then I put a glowstone nook right there in the very corner. So basically if there is nowhere for that stuff to spawn, like anywhere around the crucible and even on top of it, it can't spawn it. So we can just do this, <laughs> throw in a couple of ender pearls and a mana steel and do that. In fact, we can do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, make a lot of that stuff at once so there's a lot of extra junk in there and clear that out and just doesn't make any of the flux goo around. So that makes crucible crafting super, super, super easy. <laughs> That's probably a bug. That's probably something they'll fix in the future, I'm sure, or at least I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, for right now, I can just go ahead and, you know, drop in a bunch of those and a bunch of these and make Thaumium really quickly and not really worry about it. All right, guys, I thought I'd give you a progress update on where we are right now in making this Dimension Builder. Yeah, this is way more expensive than I thought it was going to be because each one of these Draconic Flux Capacitors... Uh, not only does it use all the awakened draconium, but like these draconic energy cores, for instance, require, uh, the bedrockium, the void metal, the terra steel and iridium. The iridium, we don't really care about the terra steel though. I had made just enough. I thought we were going to have extras. No, <laughs> we made just enough of this, but where the real cost of this comes in are these energy cores or I guess, yeah, the draconic energy core. Cause we have to put 5,184 millibuckets of molten draconium on each one of those and each one of these things requires three of those 
And I think that's 36 ingots per one of these. So it's like 108 ingots per one of these. And yeah, that's after making like all of uh, the wyvern cores, which require four of these per wyvern core. And each one of those requires four draconium ingots. Anyway, long story short, not only does it require a lot, but it takes forever to pour on here and then it takes forever for it to harden. Uh, long story short, we are about 23 draconium ingots short. This is the last of our draconium. Everything is gone. <laughs> yeah, we have used quite a lot of the stuff. Um, maybe I shouldn't have spawned the dragon that last time. We would have had just a little bit extra. I don't know. Pretty much I'm waiting for our quarry to bring in draconium ore. I'm fortuning it. And we're going from there. I might end up going to the end and looking for another meteor. We're going to need to do something here pretty quick because we are basically out of the stuff and we need more. And then we're going to need, you know, our normal supply of draconium for the other things that we're doing. So, yeah, we definitely, definitely need to find ourselves another meteor. Oh, man, this stuff is so expensive. But, yeah, I have created three of these energy, uh, the flux capacitor, three of these. We need a total of four, and we are almost there, but yeah, not quite. Oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> so I might take a break, like I said, go to the end, try and uh, find myself one of those meteors. Uh, this thing was set up so I could pour, was it molten redstone on one of these things? We had to make a bunch of, uh, I can't even remember that. I think it's the wyvern flux capacitors. Yeah, each one of those requires 7,200 millibuckets, I guess, 72 molten redstone dust in each one of those and i think this is the fastest way of doing it, is using like a tank or something with the transfer node with stack upgrade speed upgrade once it hardens and you put the next one in there like it's completely full you don't have to wait for this thing to fill up but yeah anyway guys i'm gonna go ahead try and get some more draconium ore and dust and we'll be right back all right guys well i'm here in the end i've been searching around for a while finally 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 came across another meteor so if we go to the map, well, actually, you know what? We can't go to the map. Let's let's fall down quite far. I think we have to go down to about Y50 because I think that's where the map's uncovered. It's about, no, I went down too far. Uh, yeah, about right here. All right. So uh, these are the two meteors that we found previously, and then I started going down lower and lower and lower and lower. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of gone pretty far here, and then I finally just barely saw the tip of this thing. So I've been trying to keep the same border not going like too far out or whatever. But yeah, I saw the, the tip right here and then I came out over and that looks like a pretty decent sized meteor to be honest. It looks like it's about the same size as this one. Uh, the first one we found was rather small. This one was decently big and it feels like this one's going to be decently big as well. It seems like there's a lot of mass here. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to go through, I'm going to harvest all the things, <laughs> try and get a decent amount of draconium. I think this is all we need. To continue on, but yeah, it's going to take me about 30 minutes or so, I think, to harvest all the draconium ore out of here uh, and deal with the Endermen and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it, and we'll be right back, guys. Oh, man, guys, that was a pretty good meter, to be honest. We got two, almost two and a half stacks, I guess two and a third stacks of draconium ore. That's really good. Next up is I just need to take this over and fortune it. That's the way I do it. I did try putting this into the sag mill before with the uh, the dark steel balls or whatever that's supposed to increase the output. And I tried one with fortune and I got six. And I tried it with the dark steel. Oops, I need the uh, uh, builder's one. Yeah, I tried it with the uh, the fortune. I got six dust. And then I tried it with the sag mill with the dark steel balls and I got six. So it felt like it was about the same. So I tried another ore in the sag mill and then I got four and I tried another one and I got four. So it kind of feels like fortune's better, but I never really tried multiple ores with fortune. Anyway, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and fortune this stuff. Yeah, we got a lot of draconium dust happening now. This is great. Uh, this is definitely going to get us started or I guess get us finished where we were going. Uh, so yeah, let me go ahead and finish up the crafting that we had going on over here and we'll be back guys. Whew, this has taken so long to get to this point, guys, but check it out. We are able to make our Dimension Builder now, finally. These Draconic Flux Capacitors, I said if we had enough of the Awakened Draconium, I'd make one for myself. No, 
I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Nonetheless, I absolutely need to get more power on my person at some point in the future. 80 million is enough. We don't need 250 right now. Maybe sometime in the future, like I said, if we have a ridiculous amount of the draconium stuff and it just doesn't matter anymore. Uh, right now, we are up to 1,017 draconium ingots from zero, so that's pretty good. But yeah, finding those meteors take forever. Ah, no, 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 no. Anyway, Dimension Builder made it. We got it. That's awesome. We got eight a weakened draconium blocks remaining right now. So I guess I didn't have to kill the dragon those two additional times, whatever. We have the stuff for later on. <laughs> so the dimensional builder, this is how we can build a dimension in RF tools. However, we still have a few other pieces to of this puzzle that we still have to put together. Uh, so let's see, we have, I think we need a dimension inscriber. I'm going to have to double check all this stuff. I know for sure we need a matter transmitter, a matter receiver. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, I think we're going to need a dim researcher in the future at some point. Not right now. Oh man. There's a few more things that we still need. Anyway, let's go ahead and build the ones that I know for sure that we need. Let's get ourselves a matter transmitter. So that requires a machine frame. In fact, I think the other one's going to require one too. So let's make two of those. So there's a transmitter. Uh, let's make a receiver. Okay. We're going to need a dialing device. That's the other thing we needed for sure. Uh, so we need one more machine frame. Rip all these resonant machine frames. <laughs> all right, so let's make one of those dialing device. Cool. So we got a few pieces. I think there's one more we need. I'm not sure if it's the dimension editor or not. You know what? We're going to make the dimension editor. Even if we don't need it, I'm going to make it. Okay, so there's a dimension editor, dialing device, matter receiver, matter transmitter, and dimension builder. Yeah, I think it might be a dimension inscriber we need to. You know what? Making it. Okay, so there's all those pieces. How many of those machine frames do we have for me? That was the last one. Uh-oh. All right, well, I'm going to go set up our lasers to craft, like, I don't know, 10 more of those things tonight or something. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and place these machines down. These all do require RF. I don't know where we're going to place them. It's probably going to be another temporary placing them down somewhere, maybe up against this back wall. Like we don't really use this back wall for anything. We have power lines running underneath here. That might make sense. And we used to have the portal, the portal gun portal up there. Yeah. You know what? Let's put these machines up against this back wall and I'm going to run some power to them and do a little bit of stuff off camera here. And we'll be right back guys. All right, guys, so I've done a few things off camera here. I did put the machines over in this general area, and I'm not 100% sure if we're going to leave them here, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we have the matter receiver. This is where we warp back to, which we don't really need since we have our little thingy enhanced charm of dislocation. And then we have the matter transmitter. This is where we warp from to another dimension for the first time. Again, we can just use our enhanced charm of dislocation to warp uh, back and forth once we get there for the very first time. Uh, so I did make myself a dimlet researcher. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure how all this stuff works. It's been a little bit of time since I last used it. But I do know the dimlet researcher. This is a machine where you put the unknown dimlets in. It does a little process and it spits out a, you know, a realized dimlet or whatever it is that they call these. So let's try one. Yeah, we got 209 of these things. We get these off of killing Endermen. Uh, yeah, and I did have to make another resonant machine frame. That took a minute for that to go through. Uh, so anyway, let us put this right here. I can't remember how long this takes. Oh, that is very, very quick, actually. Okay, uh, so Biome Brushland. Actually, you know what? I just earned an achievement. Dr. Dimlet. <laughs> I want to grab a couple of these. I didn't realize it was going to be that quick. I thought it was going to take, like, you know, 10 minutes or something to research one. Because the machine has not been infused. Uh, so there's a Bio Mesa Plateau M. Night Dark. Sky, sky Dark Night Dimlet. Wow, I totally was not reading that in any correct order. Uh, poor Iron Ore Dimlet. What is Poor Iron Ore? I have no idea what this is. That is from Railcraft, apparently. Okay, uh, let's try another one. Forest Hills. We'll just go through the rest of these and just see what we get. Effect Night Vision Dimlet. Sky Body Large Moon Dimlet. Okay. 
What do we got here? Nether Amber Ore Dimlet. That seems like a very worthless Dimlet. <laughs> Purple Fog. Okay, well, as you can see, there's a lot of different random things. And if we search for Dimlet, you can see there is a lot of different ones. Some of these are really rare, like this Resonant Ender that I just got on top of. That's a Rarity 6. And some of these are really common, like all of the different biomes. But yeah, there is like three pages of these things. And then uh, later on, we can get more advanced and take dimlets apart and swap them around and put different pieces in and make our own dimlets out of different things. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure how we make <laughs> different dimensions here. I did go ahead and make myself an empty dimension tab. Now, I'm pretty sure this is all we have to do just to make a dimension. Uh, let us search for this real quick. So the dimension tab uh, is just paper and redstone. Very, very cheap. So we put the dimension tab over into, I think the dimension editor. No, it is not this one. We put it into this machine. This is the dimension inscriber. A new world awaits. Uh, so anyway, we put it right here and then we can drop in our different uh, dimlets, whichever ones we've researched. Uh, we haven't done anything, so we're going to do a completely random world. No idea what we're going to get. It could be really horrible or it could be really good. Uh, we can name it right here. So we'll just do random store. And there's a realized dimension tab. Dimension progress 0%. Creation cost 2,000, maintenance cost 10, tick cost 100 ticks. Okay, so then we put this over in the dimension builder. So that goes there. It does a little percent thing. It costs the amount of RF it costs, and then it turns into a realized dimension tab. Uh, so it costs 25 RF per tick to keep this going. And as far as I know, as long as there's power in the dimlet, like we don't have to wait, for, or the dimension, I mean, we don't have to wait for this thing to get completely full. Uh, as long as there's power there, we should be able to warp to it. Uh, so I think we have to keep the realized dimension in the uh, dimension builder. Yeah, because that's what's keeping this thing powered and we don't want it to run out of power. So now the dialing device, we can tell this to go to a random world. Is there a way that we can rename this thing? Aha, here we go. Uh, home. We'll say public. Is there, how do I... Do I just hit enter on that? I don't know. I guess just clicking off of that thing. Okay, so now this thing should say, nope. Oh yeah, it does say home. Okay, so that is affecting this matter transmitter. <laughs> so we can do there and we can do here and we can say dial. Yeah, now we got a beam. The beam is green. I think we should be okay to go. Man, I really hope this is gonna work and we don't do something bad. <laughs> okay, so this thing has 40 million RF uh let's do it yolo starting tra teleportation oh man don't kill me so what do we got oh well that's weird uh uh-huh so normally that is weird terrain over there i feel like there's something wrong <laughs> with this dimension so normally when you warp here, you get like this little clay thing. And I think there's a matter receiver thing that appears here in the center. But this whole thing seems to be of ruined uh, by this lake or whatever. Um, okay. So I guess the first thing we should do. Let's uh, add a new waypoint here. We'll see. Add new. And we'll call this random. Dim two. I think is the dimension number for this. That's just for my own knowledge. So let's commit, we'll lock it. Okay, so now we have a way back here. Why is the world looking this funky? It's like the entire area that we warped into is way lower level than the rest of the terrain. That is so odd. So we go from a marsh to, what biome is this? Is this still marsh? It says marsh on the thing. Huh. How's our solar helmet working? Is it working at all? I don't think it is. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like we have a yellow sky. It's raining. Our solar helmet doesn't work here, so we can't stay here for forever. Uh, I guess one good thing, though, since uh, we have these sheer faces, 
We should be able to find some of the dimensional shards. There's a random, is this lava behind here? Yeah, there's lava behind there. Natural cobblestone generator. Uh, we should be able to find maybe some of the dimensional ore. We need that stuff to infuse our machines with. And that only spawns in the RF tools dimensions. Yeah, it's really weird how the different height terrain happened here. What's up with this? Chunks load in. Well, I'm not seeing any of the dimensional ore either. I know that stuff is kind of rare and I don't know what level it spawns at. Maybe if we go into any eye and look for it, it should tell us like a certain level. Hmm. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's so weird the way this generated. I'm just baffled by that. Okay, yeah, actually, I guess we can look at the mini-map too and see like this whole area is just weird looking. Hmm. Okay, well anyway, uh, we can fly around here and use this uh, as we like. Yeah, and there's going to be these buildings. This is similar to Miscraft. You find these buildings. It's got some uh, of the dimensional things in it, whatever they are. How do you get these out of there? Okay, punch them. I guess I'll take the picture frames too. And we get these. Okay, so what do we got? We got some unknown dimlets. We got a uh, flooded cavern dimlet. Malachite ore dimlet. Hunger too. That doesn't sound like a good one. And body planet dimlet huh okay uh so what was the outside of this made of ah is this dimensional pattern one block i'm not sure if this is useful or not hmm okay well the next thing that i need to do is fly around to these different buildings uh if the chunks will load in <laughs> yeah i need to fly around to those different buildings and collect oh those horses are like killing themselves rip horses <laughs> i need to fly around to those different buildings and collect all the different dimlets hopefully we can find a decent amount i saw the picture frames over here look there's two of them you can see the picture frames aha so that's kind of a nice way to do it yeah but we need to dimensional blank block i don't know are these ones that we need can we do anything with these blocks they just turn to uh, uses. Yeah, it just looks like we can turn them into blocks or whatever. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we need to collect a lot of these dimlets. We are going to eventually want to build a, a proper dimension. Forest Hills Canyon Lush. Yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, this is things that I need to do. Uh, just go around and collect these things. So I'm gonna do that and I will, you know, bring you guys back in if something interesting happens or if I find something cool or whatever. But yeah, I'll see you guys in just a minute. Uh, sorry about the magnet sound. I just got this material emerald ore dimlet. That sounds awesome, guys. Uh, stained clay. All right, all right, all right, magnet. You win, you win. All right, what is this one? Phantasmagoric and Inferno Dimlet. Okay. Give me this. <laughs> yeah, we need to send some of these home. We're just getting too many. But this Emerald Ore, that is really good. Um, I was questioning how we're going to get uh, some of the... What is it called? The Dense Emerald Ore? Um, back to Draconic Evolution. Yeah, back here. There's a different tiers of... Uh, weapon. So we have like the wyvern, which is the first tier and requires um, You know like a destruction pickaxe or whatever and then requires an emerald ore. That's fine We have like 15 emerald ores. That's not a big deal But it's the second tier that requires the dense emerald ore and I was questioning how we're gonna get that now If we can make a world that's completely emerald ore or like an emerald or sphere or tendril or I don't know whatever I can only imagine that the dense ore mod is going to make some of those dents, and that's going to be how we can get those ores. So that sounds pretty amazing to me. Uh, so that is something we'll look at in the future is making a world that has emeralds in it. Uh, but I'm going to continue to fly around and find some of these dimlets. Oop, there's another building right here. Oh, I was just there. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to continue to fly around and find these buildings with the dimlets, and we'll be back, guys. Well, here's another interesting one. Material Yellowite Ore. So that means we'll have infinite material for our big reactor eventually. Uh, yeah, that's pretty amazing. 
Let's see, what else do we get? We got a tendrils dimlet, so we can make tendrils out of any of these materials. Obviously, it's going to cost a lot to power these dimensions with the crazy, like, you know, features. But yeah, that's going to be really awesome. And then I got a molten silver dimlet, which I assume is just going to be silver that we could suck out and then use to, you know, cast into molds or whatever. I don't know if this is going to be of much use. It looks really expensive. Uh, anyway, it's a rarity of six, which is kind of cool, though. Um, were any of these other high rarities? I don't think so. I guess, yeah, I guess the rarity six on that makes that pretty awesome though. Uh, anyway, I'm continuing to go through and collect more dimlets. Let's see, where are we at right now? Yeah, I've been going towards the north. I kind of, you know, went to the west and I was like, yeah, let's go to the north because I was getting into this area. Anyway, yeah, we still got a lot to check out. And one thing I did notice about the, uh, the spawn that I didn't write at the start it said something went wrong with the destination, so I assume that's what that's all about. Yeah, I just noticed that a little bit ago when I tried sleeping. And by the way, sleeping in this dimension doesn't really do anything. You sleep through the night, but it doesn't make it daytime. Uh, it's always raining here, and mobs do spawn at night. So anyway, you just got to kind of tough it out. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue looking for more dimlets, and we'll be back, guys. Well, I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. I clicked my enhanced charm dislocation instead of my ender pouch. So I worked back here to the base. But yeah, we just got done finding... What else we got here? There was another good one. Molten electrical steel. That sounds pretty good. That's, uh, you know, a material normally we'd have to craft in an alloy smelter, right? And that's just kind of a pain. We can make a world with a bunch of this stuff, slurp it all out, and then, you know, cast it or whatever. So that could be kind of cool. Uh, we got another tendrils. Let's see. What else? We got a... Hmm. This one says it's craftable. Material default dimlet. I think we just got like another molten liquid, didn't we? Witchery brew. Yeah, we had like gold somewhere here. Maybe I can't find it. <laughs> uh, maybe I sent it back. There it is. Liquid molten gold dimlet. So that's another rarity six. So we have molten silver and molten gold. Well, we could combine those and make ourselves a bunch of, um, uh, and no, I was going to say endearing, but that's not the right one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Electrum. There we go. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good dimlets and things like that that we're finding here. I've just been sticking all of these in the ME system. Eventually I will have to pull these out of here and then put them on some kind of a thing where we can store mass quantities of those, like a filing cabinet or something. Yeah. We are using up a lot of the uh discs here we still got another bank that hardly has any of these 16k used and we still have this one down here that's still all 4ks yeah both of those are 4ks we're gonna have to upgrade those at some point and then start making more discs and things like that uh we need to get to the point where we can make a world that has <laughs> the uh what's it called the quartz the nether quartz that is what we are looking for that's why we even started messing with the rf tools so we can start making dimensions that have all the materials in it that we need. But yeah, guys, I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here today. Spent a lot of time getting all of that stuff crafted up <laughs> so we could make our dimension builder. And boy, was it worth it, guys. We're going to be able to do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we need to increase our power supply. That's going to be one of the biggest things we need to do here pretty soon. Get that big reactor online. Start getting fuel for it. All of this kind of stuff. So yeah, super excited for things to come, guys. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.